42 of you qualified to move on. Recap. My loins are still girded. <laughs> and this is where we left off. With Todoroki that now. about to take the headband. Yeah. And Ida's on this team too, right? Cavalry battle finale. And here's the, the future champion of the tournament. This just means there's nothing left to lose. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Leadership Minuto. He's still in it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Ida, forward. Right. Is this how you honor your family, Ida? By taking I'm orders from Todoroki? Oh my god. No, my shadow friend. <laughs> Damn. They do make a really good team. They learned this in the uh, the battle against the villains, right? They gotta figure this out. They gotta figure out some kind of defense against this ice foot thing. Baby. Stop. <laughs> Please. No more babies. He's still fighting, damn. That is a really amazing quirk, the alchemy thing. She's too good at her creation. Yeah, yeah. Have to be careful. My quirk's offensive ability gets stronger when I'm in darkness. It's pretty cool. But that makes dark shadow aggressive and difficult to control. Mmm. Interesting trade-off. Dark shadow is too timid in the light. Aw. <laughs> All we have to do is hang on to the 10 million points, no matter what. Have they gotten any points? Kirishima. We have a slight change of plans. Murder. <laughs> Calm down, Bakugo. You've got to keep a level head or we'll never get our points back. <laughs> <laughs> level head is not in his vocabulary right now or ever. Wow. Class B, huh? Does he, like, take other people's quirks? That is amazing. Now he's rock? But I think nice. That's amazing. Huh? Nato Monoma. Answering the question, who is this guy, finally? Touches, but only for five yeah, we got minutes. that. Five Plus, minutes. He can only borrow one at a time. Okay. Yeah, that would be overpowered if it was more than one. That's what he does. <laughs> Shoots milk? <laughs> what the hell? It's too sticky. Oh, oh, no. Sticky milk, huh? Doing good, kid. He's exploiting your weaknesses. Don't be a fool. Loving, supporting dad. Everyone, we have less than 60 seconds. Time for a monologue. <laughs> Talk over! Watch him! Oh, they got it. Damn. Eat, are you traitor? <laughs> but I mean, like, they're gonna make it anyway. They're gonna make it to the next round. What was that? Plus Ultra. It's a secret move I've been saving. No one in the class knew about it. They're gonna lose piss. <laughs> Insanity! This entire game was just turned completely on its head! It never really stands out in a crowd, huh? We'll get the points back, Deku! I knew it! Uh, right, they can steal it back. I'm gonna become That's a true. pro. I'll sign with a good agency and make plenty of money. I'm not alone in this. We're counting on you. Yeah, all these kids are so driven. And, and a lot of them have a lot of pressure on their shoulders. Oh, he's using fire! He got threatened. I have a pretty good feeling that the fact that this means so much to Todoroki means he's somehow either consciously or maybe unconsciously carrying on a battle between All Might and Endeavor. Because All Might and Endeavor are at like opposite ends watching their two protégés. And Todoroki targeted Deku, partly because of his All Might connection, right? He mentioned that. And then here, even though he said he wouldn't, he's using his fire, which is his father's side. But I guess there's something personal there too, because he wants to beat Deku himself more than he wants to avoid using his father's abilities. A lot of these kids have some kind of family pressure. But you know, the, the good thing is, if you zoom out, you can tell that this is a good thing for their friendship. You don't come out of this hating each other. I mean, maybe there's rivalry that grows, but you come out of this with respect, hopefully. I mean, if they're halfway decent people, which they are. Clearly they are. With time almost up, Team Todoroki's in first place with four headbands. Yeah, it's not even close. Now we can let the clock run out. Losers, get back here! <laughs> Doesn't he ever give up? You made an enemy for life. All right. Solid air. Solid air. Interesting. That's kind of cool. It's like uh, uh, air stepping in the Kyoshi novels. You kind of messed up Tony Bakugo. 
Uh, like, he operates best on rage. <laughs> oh, you're about to get gunked. Oh, never mind. But there's one thing they forgot to consider. Bakugo's rage. We'll get our points back from this idiot. Damn. Elbow guy, tape him. Elbow guy. <laughs> Young Bakugo. <laughs> Young Bakugo. Truth, but there's a difference between those who aim for the top and those who will settle. Mmm. He said that before. Bakugo's overwhelming tenacity. Yeah, yeah, it's an acid. That's a good way of putting it. It's a much nicer way of putting it. I feel like Bakugo needs this. I don't mean for me. I mean for like him and his class because he's kind of gotten dunked on a lot by like his his peers, and that's got to be excruciating for him because we've seen he he actually has a lot of natural leadership. Like kids just followed him around. He just got off on a really bad foot. But actually, I think like when used well, that's one of his better qualities. Like he's inspiring. And then separately, we're back to this idea again, this all might idea that there's a huge difference between people who settle and people who aim for the top, and how that makes all the difference. And the idea of settling is really interesting to me because I think I had it wrong for a long time. I think that my my concept of settling for a long time was that there are like objective values to things in society, and so some things are just naturally low, and some things are naturally high. But I upgraded that idea a little bit to the point where really there's there's nothing that's low like there's no occupation or no life pursuit i think that is settling in and of itself just by the very action of it the settling part comes in when you're not meeting your own expectations and then when you think about it that way it becomes a super important thing to think about and a super important indicator because then that means that settling is when you know on some level that there's something you want and if you want something there's a very very high chance that there's something in that pursuit that will teach you lessons you need to learn and by avoiding that you're like not accepting the responsibility of going to the next stage in your life or in your development. In fact, those very instincts are the, the calls to adventure, right? Those very instincts are the, the adventures of life. And that's why I think we have this very heavy concept of settling and why we all can sort of feel that. When this came up in an earlier episode, I talked about how part of the reason why we, we aim low is because we base our, our dreams and our goals on the things we most commonly see, which is sort of a mistake because what we see is sort of a baseline, a starting place to stand on that's solid. But that shouldn't be the limit of, of imagination. That shouldn't be the reach, you know? Those should just be like institutions that should be respected and then the reach is like well where can i reach my highest potential and a lot of times that that zone is something unfamiliar and few people have gone into and so finding goals based on what you see is a mistake in that one area and another reason why i think we don't we don't even aim for the right things in the first place is that we're not really told enough about the the inevitability of sacrifice for greatness sacrifice is just part of the bargain and then i think it becomes about finding the right sacrifices finding a struggle in life is like one of the most essential things for finding fulfillment in life i think but it has to be the right one it has to be a struggle that feels good rather than a, a struggle that like leaves you depleted or wipes you out so these are all really interesting ideas and i think they serve a really great purpose as radar you know radar for direction in life like where am i settling what do i actually want what high goals could i set that are maybe not so obvious when i look around me and then what sacrifices would i be willing to make to get there and what would the right sacrifices be now we're going after deku and todoroki damn maybe he'll actually win this round this will be fine what I'm do you do i'm actually going to hit him i'm just slicing through the air to take out my opponent's defenses Wow, Todoroki felt that. My left side. For sure. What am I doing? He's getting into it. He's getting real into it. My hand hurts, but it's not broken. Nice, he's getting better. He's turned the bands around to hide their point values. But he put the 10 million one on last, right? I don't know, he might be smarter than that. I did it! Look at the number. <laughs> Look at the number first. Before you celebrate. Five points. <laughs> we yeah, mixed yeah. the headbands up. Duh. There's no way we'd leave the prize on top. You underestimate us. I did it, for the record. I believe in all these kids. This poor Shadow thing, man. He's doing all the work. He's taking all the pain. Wait, don't forget Bakugo. Where's Menudo? I'm getting concerned. I really want him to continue in this tournament so I can continue rooting for him. And it helps that I'm rooting for Sue as well. Sue's awesome. Damn, Uraraka's crazy. She's very competitive as well. I see hot. Who's gonna learn the names first of the characters? Bakugo or me? Well, that was a very dramatic finish. Now, let's take a look at who our top four teams are. In first place, Kate Todoroki. <laughs> Still in his idiot mode. A. I let everyone down, didn't I? You won. Damn, like, when does it end? He just can't be happy. He just doesn't want to be happy. Sometimes people like that, like a feeling of guilt, is a defense mechanism. They feel that by worrying about things excessively, it means they have control over the situation. They don't let their minds lapse into happiness. There's definitely a good side to that, which is that you're, like, always thinking. But 
you know, come on, take the victory, Ida. You're the reason we won. Thank goodness for that. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter. The points sure. don't stack, right? It's just elimination. So it's all good. Exactly. See, this guy's thinking. I tried to grab the 10 million point headband, but things didn't go as planned. Still, I got one. Hey, MVP. MVP of this round, for sure, on Deku's team. So it's only four. A symbol of hope for all the spectators. I said I'd never use this to attack. But as soon as I was overwhelmed, I broke my own promise. Huge metaphor there. Yeah, yeah. There's multiple games being played at the same time. Can you stick to your principles when things are going wrong? In the heat of the moment. How disappointing. No! Congrats. Damn it. Um, Ida, you are holding out on us. I had no idea you could do that. Rest assured, it she mastered the Ida walk. You. I was just being strategic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like this guy. Got something to say? Something on your mind? Me here. Now what? Yo. Yo. Long time no Yeah, yeah, they got some stuff. Let's catch up. Endeavor. All might. <laughs> I highly doubt that he's as as dark as he's being portrayed here. He's just coming off as intimidating. He is one of the greatest heroes, right? So I'm sure there's more to his character than is being initially portrayed as like this austere, fiery figure. It's funny how like there's a lot of stuff going on that's really interesting for the characters throughout this this game. The game is cool, but it's sort of secondary, I think, to what's actually happening, which is that a bunch of characters are exploring their range at the same time. Like, Todoroki is, is interesting in that regard because he's obviously very skilled, very powerful, but he's made a vow. There's certain things he really doesn't want to be based on his father. But I think we all know that feeling of like making a vow not to do something or not to be some way but it doesn't accurately account for like the fact that it's it's part of our personality. Like it's something that we need to cope with in a different way. We can't just deny certain elements of ourselves. And as soon as we're tested, that's when the thing has a way of, of coming out, even when we really don't want it to happen. Do do do, do do do, what? Sorry. Oh, there's an end credit sequence. Hey, I see the, the tear fountain runs in the family. That's where Deku got it. Yeah, but like I was saying, it's a very Zuko-like thing, as I mentioned, right? Like he, Todoroki, has certain elements of himself that he, he can't really avoid or ignore. I definitely know this feeling. You know, I know the feeling of seeing something, especially in your parents, seeing a trait and vowing, like, I'm never going to be that way. I'm never going to do that. And there's a fate-like or karma-like thing to it where you inevitably end up doing that exact thing. And it's sort of important and it's not bad. It just has to be done in a way that, that is balanced and actually makes you better gives you some kind of strength. Like, for example, my father can be a very, very critical, very harsh, very analytical person to the point where as a kid, it could be terrifying. Like his his lens was was insane. But growing up, you know, that's a trait that I've come to embrace and I actually really value it. Like I wouldn't trade it for anything. And just the, the key is to balance it with like kindness, you know, to use it for things I feel are, are pure and non-selfish and non-hostile and things like that. And I think that's sort of the only way to cope, like to deny it, to push it down. It sort of makes it more dangerous because it's still there and it's just waiting to come out. And I think that's that was well represented by this moment where in the heat of battle, he's about to use the fire side for protection or for attack or whatever. It's always going to be there. So the key is not to like, I'm never going to use fire, but to actually just have mastery over it, to recognize it and understand it really well, understand what that trait is, and then like be able to turn it on and off when it's suitable. So I have a feeling that's a big part of Todoroki's journey, like it is with Zuko, right? Like Zuko is all about his two halves, like his mother's side, father's side, his fire and his swordsmanship, Zuko and the blue spirit, right? All these things. But then also Bakugo, right? Same thing applies to him where we've definitely seen Bakugo go to the negative range of his personality where he's just like bitter, a bully, overly violent, can't control his rage. I mean, even in this episode, we saw that. But then the, the other side to that, I suppose, in some sense is like drive, you know, passion, leadership, which they immediately respect his classmates. And Deku, I think, has a couple. Like, All Might's pointing out one risk for Deku is, like, he's very selfless, but can he also compete in this world? Can he be competitive and try to rise to the top? The image thing, like, can he be a hero? Can he have a strong front? But also, he's very emotional, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. And there's also a physical element of that where he has to balance, like, brains and brawn. A lot of the characters come out looking really cool. Even the characters who are sort of new and are, have not really been explored that much, they look cool, at least, like the Class B guy. Ida showing some inner resolve. Ochako? Uchako? She's really sweet and really kind and nurturing, but she's got a competitive side, too, right? 
right? Like she wants to do what she wants to do. So it's really fun to watch the characters go through this challenge and sort of like navigate these things simultaneously. And now going forward, I'm excited to see, you know, the remainder of the tournament, but also Endeavor being explored a little more and the relationship with All Might. I think there's a lot there. But yeah, that's the end of, uh, of this episode. I'll see you guys for the next run of the tournament where, I don't know, how do you top riding each other like horses?